Hello and welcome back to Functional Analysis. And as always, many thanks to all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Today in part 13, we talk about operators between normed spaces. So the picture should look like this. We have one normed space on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. Now an operator T is just a map that conserves some structures of our spaces. We don't call T a function but an operator simply because often we have a space of functions as a domain or the codomain. So every time you see the notion operator, you know it's just another name for a special map. Now the first property that T should conserve is the algebraic structure, the linear structure given in the vector space. In other words, the map should be a linear map. Okay, there we have one half of our functional analytical world and the other half should be the topological structure. This is what we already know because in a metric space we have a notion of open sets. And the property that conserves these open sets is what we learned in the last video and is called continuity. Of course, this seems a little bit abstract, but we will now see that for normed spaces as we have it here, we can define another property we call bounded. And we will see that together with the linearity, this is indeed equivalent to the continuity. In this sense, one often speaks of linear bounded operators between two normed spaces. Okay, then let's start with the definition of the notion bounded. As before, we have two normed spaces and a linear map T. Of course, linear always means it conserves the vector addition and the scalar multiplication. This means that we have these two formulas and maybe you also recognize another common notation here. For linear maps, we will omit parentheses if possible. Now what we want is the length of this linear map, so we want a norm for the operator. Hence, this is then often called just the operator norm of T. And if we want to emphasize the spaces the map acts on, we have to put them in the index. However, most of the time we will omit them there because the corresponding norm spaces are known from the beginning. Okay, but we still don't know how to measure this length, so let's start with an idea. Now imagine we have our norm space x on the left hand side and y on the right hand side. Let's pick a vector x and we know we can measure the length of x. And now we know the map t acting on this vector will give us a new vector in y. So here we have the vector tx with length norm of tx. Of course, here we have to measure the length with the norm in y and here we have to measure it with the norm in x. What we now can put in relation is how much did the length change from left to right. In other words, what is the quotient of the length of tx divided by the length of x. Of course, this is now a number we could use as a definition for the norm of t. However, of course, this can only be meaningful if we look at all possible inputs on the left hand side. So we are looking at all possible ratios that can come out by going through all the x. Obviously the only exception should be the zero vector because this one is the only one with length zero. Now you might already see that the norm of t should be the biggest ratio we can get out here, so the maximum of this set. However, we can have an infinite dimension in x so we have infinitely many directions we can look at. Therefore it can happen that the maximum does not exist, so what we need here is the supremum of this set. We are in the real numbers, so we know the supremum always exists. In the worst case it would be the symbol infinity. And there we have our notion, if this norm of t is finite, we call t bounded. And I already mentioned that non-bounded linear operators can only happen if x is of infinite dimension. And please note that this notion of boundedness for linear operators is different than the notion bounded for normal functions in R for example. So please don't get confused there. Now with the definition out of the way, let's go to the proposition that connects this to the continuity. Here again we have a linear map between two normed spaces. So the same thing as before and then we know the following three things are equivalent. The first is that T as a map between metric spaces is continuous. Now B is similar but here T has only to be continuous at one point where we choose the origin as this point. 
And the last one is that T as a linear operator between normed spaces is a bounded operator. So this is the fact I already told you at the beginning. Continuity and boundedness exactly in this sense are equivalent terms for linear operators. And of course, this is so important that we should write down a proof. The first implication we should show is A to B, which is obviously immediately fulfilled because being continuous at all points implies being continuous at zero. So let's go to the next one, which would be the implication from B to C. Here we really have to do something, so let's start by writing down what it means to be continuous at zero. As often we want to use the characterization with sequences, so here we consider convergent sequences, but only with limit point zero. The continuity then implies that the images also converge, and because we have a linear map, the limit point is also zero. However, here it might be easier to work with an epsilon delta characterization for the continuity, so let me write down the claim we need here. The formulation before, which we call star now, implies there is a delta such that the norm of Tx is always less than 1 for all x with length less than delta. If you know continuity, you already know that, you already believe that, but for the sake of completeness, let's write down the proof. Let's do a proof by contraposition, so let's call the whole right hand side here just star in red. The negation of the red star then implies that for all n we find an xn with length xn less than 1 over n. The 1 over n corresponds to the delta here, so we say there is no such delta, so we can do that for all n here. Which also means that the norm of Txn is greater or equal than 1. And there you see, we found a sequence that converges to 0, but the images don't converge to 0. So this implies then, not green star. And by contraposition, this proves the claim we want to use now. We call that we want to calculate the quotient of the norm of Tx divided by the norm of x. However, at the moment we can only say something about the vectors x that have length less than delta. Of course, this is something we can use here because we could multiply with delta half, which is less than the delta, times 1 over the norm of x. So why do we do that? Simply because with that factor we can scale the length of the vector x. Since you know the properties of the norm, you know we can push that inside the norm. And you also know that t is linear. So what we get in the denominator is a vector that has exactly length delta half. And that's something that reminds us of our red star property. The vector has length less than delta, so the corresponding image has length less than 1. Hence the numerator is now less than 1, which means the whole thing is less than 2 over delta. So the only thing that remains is applying the supremum on both sides. Now since we exclude the zero vector, we know this all works, also the supremum has to be less than 2 over delta. The important thing is of course, this is not infinity. Well, this was B to C, continuity at zero implies boundedness. And now the last part is a bounded operator is continuous everywhere. So let's consider any point x tilde in x and any sequence that is convergent to this point. And then we want to look what happens to the images, so we look at t x n minus t x tilde inside the norm of y. Then the linearity tells us that we can apply t to the difference vector and then calculate the norm. And now we can use what we know, we have the finite operator norm of t, which is by definition the largest possible scaling for the length of the image. In other words, we know this is less or equal than the operator norm times the length of the input. And that's xn minus x tilde. Since we already know this is convergent, we know this goes to zero when n goes to infinity, so the whole right hand side goes to zero. Hence also the left hand side, which tells us that also the images converge. And that's by definition the continuity, so our proof is finished. Okay, so this was our first important result for linear operators between normed spaces.
What you can do for yourself now is showing that this operator norm we defined is indeed a norm in the usual sense. With that I think it's good enough for today. Thanks for listening, thanks for supporting me and see you next time. Bye.